All right, so then what do we get so far? Okay, what we get so far is that there's a judgment seat of Christ prior to the wedding. Did we get that so far? All right. Now, how do we get these orders over here, right? We know the rapture is before the judgment seat of Christ, before the wedding. Where do we get all these, okay? Where do we get all this other stuff? Okay, so let's do this. First of all, if you keep reading Revelation 19, you'll notice verse 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Just briefly go through that. You'll notice that is when Christ comes down from heaven and makes war on the earth. Did you see that? All right, so then the second advent is accurate to be after the wedding. Do we see that? Okay, so it's going to be after the wedding. What is this over here? Okay, so continuing on the theory, the theory is I believe that when we die and go to heaven, when we get raptured to go to heaven, we will have a time to enjoy our mansions. Because there is a verse that says that. Look at Romans, uh, not Romans, go to John 14. Keep your hand at Revelation 19 because we're going verse by verse Revelation. But go to John 14. John 14. Look at John chapter 14. Now let's read verse 1, 2, and 3 over here. Notice in verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to what? Prepare a place for you. So Jesus is going to prepare a place for them. And if I go and prepare a place for you, when he goes to prepare our mansion, here's the rapture. What does it say? I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. See that? So when Jesus comes to rapture us up to heaven, you'll notice over here that they will go to their mansions. Notice this is when he comes down to rapture them, they will enjoy their mansions. That's why I believe that when Christ does the rapture, that we're going to go to the mansions before the judgment seat. So I don't know how long that will be, but it will definitely be enough time where we can enjoy it. Prior to that, then, uh, uh, so then we enjoy our time in our mansions up in heaven, and then later on comes the judgment seat of Christ. And then through the judgment seat of Christ, then we have the wedding. That's how I see the order as so far. Now, the question is, but how do you judge like millions of saved Christians around the world within a short span of time? Because in the tribulation, no matter how long you put it, whether 3, 7, 10, 14, 100, whatever, okay? It doesn't matter. But whatever the timeline of the tribulation is, the standard is seven years. So then let's say that we put seven years over here. Then uh, that's not enough time, no matter what. Because you got millions of Christians and God has to judge everything of your life. Which is, you know, if everyone lived like 70 years at shortest, I mean, that's still going to go on for centuries, if, uh, if not millennia. So then what do we do with this? The easy answer is go to 2 Peter 3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's good, brother. Go to 2 Peter chapter 3. And if you, st uh, a lot of scientists, they try to grasp, it, grasp this, and Einstein tried to grasp it through relativity. But God was way ahead of these scientists. And some of their theories and statements were actually even wrong too. Scientists just finally figured out, or they were like trying to catch up later on, where time would work differently out there through the universe compared to our world. But however, all the way out there, works, the time works differently out there compared to our world. Uh, if we go through one year on the earth, then out there it could be like seven or it can even be shorter. It could be one second. Yeah. So then nothing changed though. Nothing changed. And nothing changed where out there, where it feels faster or feels longer. It doesn't do that. It feels like literally three seconds or two hours, however long it is. So if this goes seven years and then uh, seven years over here is three seconds, it'll literally go three seconds. It won't feel like... Like that, three seconds. Wow. And then scientists teach that as science. But then the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, 
verse 9, look at this, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, excuse me, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Look at that. Don't be ignorant. God's like, don't be ignorant. Mm -hmm. Scientists are the most ignorant people. And then they took like 1900 uh, something years later to catch up. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a what? A thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Look at that. So over here, God can take as much time as he wants to, just like we can take as much time as we want to over here. And then uh, it'll go like one day over here and God's like, uh, where, where, where hell is unleashed on the earth and then people are dying and screaming and God's like, we got, still got plenty of time over here to enjoy heaven. Still got plenty of time. How about that, man? Okay, so, uh, so then that explains about the timeline over here. Now, about the tribulation saints, what do you mean, Pastor, that these people later catch up and join the wedding? Uh, what's that supposed to mean? Look at uh, the book of Luke. We're going to look at the book of Luke, and I had it bookmarked, but of all things where I had it bookmarked, uh, I just lost it. So let me try to find it quickly. So I think it's chapter 22. You can jump over there. Luke chapter 22. Uh, it's going to be Luke 12, actually. I found it. Luke 12. So it's going to be Luke 12. All right, now look at this. Now, this is evidence that there has to be two raptures. You want to listen to this. There are people who uh, believe there is a post-trib or a mid-trib rapture, and then they deny a pre-trib rapture. They said, no, the rapture should be at the tribulation. But then you got uh, the other group that says, no, uh, there is no rapture after the tribulation. The rapture is before the tribulation. Well, who's right and who's wrong? See, they're only looking at a couple verses. They don't realize both of them are right. Because they don't study the whole Bible. There are undoubtedly two raptures. You might say, why? I'll tell you why. Because the wife has to be raptured up here so they can have their wedding. So the wife has to be up here. However, there has to be guests later on who will catch up with the wedding. If there's a wedding going, already ongoing... And these guys are later catching up to the wedding. Wait, what does that mean then? That means there is a church already raptured up to heaven. That way Jesus can do his wedding. And that also means that these people are going to later catch up to the wedding. So that means there are two groups up there. Amen, you get that? And one verse will blow you away. Just one verse. Look at this. Luke chapter 12. Notice verse 30. 36, and ye yourselves, like unto men that wait for their Lord, when, look, what does it say? He will return from the what? Wedding. Wow, so then, see, he's already having his wedding with his wife, but he's coming down to pick up the tribulation saints to catch up with the wedding. Keep reading. That when he cometh and knocketh, that they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, see that, that's a rapture, shall find what? Watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. See, they're going to join the marriage supper over here. Oh, that book is so amazing. So there's no doubt this proves pre-trib rapture because the wife has to be up there earlier, go through all this preparation and go through some part of the wedding before a tribulation rapture happens for these servants who are waiting for their Lord. So this also proves the tribulation rapture. Ah, dispensational raptures is a matter of fact. It's doctrine. It's not loony. It's not occultic teaching. Amen. It's dispensational truth. That's what it is. All right, so we see over here that there's undoubtedly two raptures. So then if they're considered the wife, then what are these tribulation saints? Go to Matthew 25. You notice that verse? Matthew 25 is so infamous where people use this as, hey, you better uh, keep the Holy Spirit burning because if you don't, then you're going to miss out the rapture or you're going to lose the Holy Spirit. Hey, that's not you. Amen. You can never lose it. See that? You never lose it over here. 
But over here, you lose it because this is the different timeline. This is a tribulation. The tribulation, of course, they're in danger of losing it because down on the earth, they have to stay away from the mark of the beast. They have to be persecuted for the name of Jesus. They cannot deny him. That's a lot of work. That's dependent for their salvation. So notice that their salvation is different from church age salvation. Tribulation salvation is faith and works. Church age is faith not by works. And uh, I don't have to prove the verses to you for this. All you have to do is look at Revelation 14 verse 12 and Revelation chapter 12. And it says plainly that they have the faith and uh, keep the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's plainly faith and works. Okay, but anyway, let's go to, let's talk about this one. So what passage did I men mention? I'm sorry. Matthew 25. All right. Let's go to Matthew 25. Notice who they are. They're the bridesmaids. They're the virgins here. They're the bridesmaids here. All right. Look at Matthew chapter 25. That's why it's scriptural to have bridesmaids at the wedding. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Look at Matthew chapter 25. I'm kidding. <laughs> Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven uh, be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the who? Bridegroom. Five of them were wise, five were foolish. Them that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. See, they slept. That's why God says, watch. See, be watchful. Don't sleep. Uh, verse 6, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And notice verse 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. See that? That's why verse 13 says they're supposed to watch, not sleep. Why? Because he's coming to rapture them. Notice that he shuts the door on them at verse 10. They were ready to go to him in the marriage, but what? The door was shut. Verse 11, Lord, Lord, open to us. Verse 12, he says, I know you not. And when he says, I know you not, that means you're not saved. Because Matthew 7 says, I never knew you. Depart from me. And uh, cursed into everlasting fire, etc. So we see that definitely salvation is different here compared to salvation over here. And the operation here is undoubtedly, the people here are undoubtedly different from here. The church at Ephesians 5 is what? A virgin. Singular, it didn't say plural. Virgin. Over here is virgins, see that? Why? Because it's bridesmaids. Oh, that scripture is so enlightening. All right, now let's go to Revelation 19. Hence is the doctrine of dispensational truth. Did you all enjoy that? All right, let's go to Revelation 19 now. Let's continue onward. All right, verse 9, verse 9. And he saith unto me, so God says to him, Blessed are they which are called, so God says, uh, you're blessed if you're called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. All right, so the tribulation saints, they're called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. God says, blessed are you if you're called to there. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. And that's true. It's very true. This is true. This will happen. And God says, blessed are you if you're called to the marriage supper. That's why he's calling them. They have to be watchful and wait. Okay, I have to actually close it here, believe it or not, because it's already 145. So uh, we only, yeah, amazing, right? Yeah, just boom like that. Why? Because this is the doctrine of dispensational truth. Mind-blowing. All right, let's close with.